Hi, I'm Tony Paikaday. We're here live from GTC 24 with Yarek Kutalovsky, CEO and founder of DeepL. So Yarek, thank you for joining it's us. It's a pleasure for being here with you. So um, tell me a little bit more about your role. Yeah, so I'm, I'm CEO of DeepL, and, and DeepL is, is really on a mission to break down language barriers. Uh, I don't know, like if you know, there's people speaking different languages in, uh, in this world, and, and they actually have problems with that. And sometimes it's really tricky to understand each other, and especially if you're, if you're, if you're not thinking about your Spain trip, but if you're thinking about uh, having customers in another country and trying to help them with using a product with um, uh, with uh, their problems with uh, with what your company is building uh, then having a tool at hand that is able to translate quickly and and with very high quality uh, that's 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 really that's really super helpful and and this is this is kind of what DeepL is standing for and we've been doing that now for a few years and uh, are really proud to be able to uh, to help this world communicate much better yeah it's incredible because if you think about it um, you're organization, your company has been doing machine translation services since 2017 and um, obviously AI has this incredible ability to eliminate borders essentially mm -hmm. and allow an enterprise to operate globally. Yep. I'm sure as your platform has really scaled in adoption, you've probably encountered a number of like challenges, things that you know you've had to address, can you share a little bit more about that, about the growth of your platform yeah. and things you've figured out along the way? Yeah, I mean, we've been supporting a huge service, uh, like even with kind of the free DeepL uh, translation service since, since the very beginnings. Uh, and that has meant really that we've went through all of the stages of growth uh, in terms of both the AI and kind of what the software stack looks like and what the product looks like, but even really down to the to the hardware. And we've been we've been uh, we've been probably using Nvidia hardware for uh, for our AI translation since the beginnings. Uh, but I still can remember the early days when I was shelving the GPUs into the racks in our in our data centers. So that all started like as it usually starts with a with a startup. And we've been got becoming more and more professional in all of that. Uh, we've had to find data centers that are supporting the kind of workloads that um, that we require. Um, we've had to ramp up on uh, what kind of hardware we are using. Uh, we've been one of the super early adopters of the DGX SuperPod uh, last year. Um, been very, very happy with uh, being able to set that up. But that's been running in a different way. I was not the one who was uh, putting the, the GPUs into into the racks anymore, uh, so that all has um, has evolved quite a lot. But we've gone through quite a few downturns with like chip shortages over the years, uh, and everything that has that has happened uh, in this in this field over over like six years now. Yeah, it's incredible, and and you know I love the fact that we've been able to help in your mission with the DJX platform with DJX SuperPod. Definitely, you know we believe that this is a, an excellent tool that supports the mission critical work that yeah. you and your team are doing. Um, how do you see the state of the art of what you're doing evolving over time? For instance, you know, you're probably looking at more and more different kinds of media. Tell us about the kinds of uh, content and information that you deal with today and how you see that evolving over time and where you think that's going. Yeah, I think I think we've gone through quite an evolution already in the last years there. Uh, we've obviously started with slightly smaller models and kind of the model sizes have been evolving um, over the time and therefore also quality. It's not been all down to model sizes, but that also plays um, plays a certain role. And and right now we are looking into this this amazing moment where, where we also had to ramp up on our compute capabilities yeah. with the DJXs, um, where LLMs are starting to play a role in, in translation and it's still kind of open a little bit on how those can be used. There's always a question on latency versus quality um, with translation. Like usually in most of applications of translation, you're really relying on, on, on low latency. Uh, so how far these large models can fulfill this task, this is still open. Um, but we are but we are trying to, to work our ways um, through that and, and see also really how the technology evolves. Uh, we've been mainly focused on text translation 
competition until uh, until now. Uh, but I think speed is the next frontier. And maybe there's going to be a point in time when we're going to be able to have that conversation and me talking Polish and you in English. Yeah. And um, that's that's. That's, that's still to explore, but it's like really a future that I'm looking forward to. That's phenomenal. I think we'll all be super excited about that. It truly allows us to connect on a much deeper level than we've ever been able to before. I, I love the idea where we could have literally an earbud in and simultaneously hearing each other in our yeah. respective languages. If you um, fast forward you know, to that distant future, is that, do you think, where ultimately this is all heading essentially? I, I think to an extent this mm -hmm. is probably where it should be heading at. Yeah. and it's and it's really funny and inter interesting in a way that language is really such a deeply human thing uh, but it's actually one of the first frontiers where AI is showing this real advantage I mean we're still kind of struggling a little bit with autonomous cars and like <laughs> self-driving cars and like everybody thought this is going to be where things uh, where things are going to be breaking through first uh, but yeah. no apparently it's language and translation and uh, something that is that is so deeply human and and, and where we thought we're going to be in charge for for a little bit longer yeah obviously the future is uh natural language and the human language is the API to speak to our data. So yeah. I love the fact that you guys are front and center in this. So um, obviously, uh, thank you for the partnership. It's phenomenal the work that your team and ours have been doing. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, obviously I want to thank you for uh, joining us today out of your busy schedule. And I want to thank our audience for watching us. Uh, be sure to explore more sessions in the GTC catalog.